welcome folks. Welcome to another episode of Freaky Game Friday. Today we've got a double bill for you with Golden Axe and Grisor. Both of these games are being played as the Spectrum version. And what is a Spectrum? But first of all, Axe Battler the Barbarian, his mother is killed by death equals Adder. So we're just going to be redefining the controls here. And I suppose we should talk about what the Spectrum is exactly. The Spectrum was a computer released in the very early 80s that was very, very big in Britain, like the equivalent of what the Commodore 64 and the Apple II were to the US. And it, play it was played using tape cassettes, not floppy disks or cartridges or anything, and the games looked like this. Looks great, doesn't it? Now I'm not very good at this game, I will attest to that, not this version or any version for that matter. And, well, I must say the controls are pretty good. You got, you have to use a keyboard for it. You can have a joystick, but I don't have a joystick for it. But as you can see, the main tactic of this game is shoulder tackle everything and die. Yeah, it's very easy to get overwhelmed in this game. As you can see, I am doing right now. Don't have the enemies hit you from both sides. If so, you'll die. If you can just swing at the air as well, that helps as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm dying a lot here. Don't don't blame me, this game's pretty hard actually. Well, hard when you don't know what you're doing. For example, don't do this. If you should learn any lesson from this game, it's don't do what I do. But I will make it past this first screen, I can guarantee. Just gotta keep shoulder tackling people and getting hit in the face. And eventually, there we go. And as the very annoying arrow tells us, we need to go. Also, beat up gremlins, because they will give you magic and food. So kick them in the face. Okay, I'm going, I'm going. And what should we find in this level, other than more shoulder tackling? Well, we find a chicken dragon, which we can ride. Onward, my valiant steed. Tail with them. I do like the way his little beak moves whenever we move. Aha! Now we will kill you, strange gremlin creatures! Now we have a full bar of magic. That means we can do ultimate destruction with it. As long as we keep tail whipping things with our chicken dragon, which is purple. Attack! Oh, chicken dragon fight. Down he goes. Now, if there is one th problem that there is with the spectrum, it's that the color ra the color range is well a spectrum, which is why we're yellow and I died. Luckily, we have two credits. But yeah, that does lead to some problems where colors do well kind of blend into each other. And as you can see, we're at the first boss fight, the Hammer Bros. Luckily, they don't throw their hammers, but they are pretty damaging with them, which is why we've dropped nuclear bombs on them. Sadly, even at full strength, the magic doesn't kill them, so we just gotta keep shopping tackling them. Luckily, I have full, I have three lives at this point, and every time you die, you get given one extra magic point. That's good. Now, his magic is very. This guy's magic is very much the middle path, as in, basically, he's kind of the in-betweener. He does all right melee and all like all right magic. The other two are the other two extremes, with the small guy of the axe being great at being great at melee and the woman being great at magic. But either way, you should be fine. As you can see, we have beaten the first level, and now it's time to camp. Bonus stage: increase your power. The blue gremlins give you magic, but the green ones they give you meat, so you can have health. But let's just keep beating up these people while they run into our fire. And I keep missing them due to depth perception. And as we go into stage 3, I have to start the tape on side B. Come on, load. Don't crash on me. Come on. There we go. Yeah, with the spectrum you do need to flip the tape a lot of times in order to get the game to work. 
but in stage 3 we're in a village. And not much is changing, we just still keep hitting people in the face. But we do get a new enemy to hit in the face, as you will see soon. But in the meantime, shoulder tackles and getting killed seem to be our main objective. Another problem with the spectrum colour scheme is that, due to the fact that everything on our character is yellow, it looks like he's naked. Or at least just wearing boots. And I keep missing with a sword because of planes and stuff. Game double teamed. There's also very little in the way of invincibility frames in this game. Luckily, magic to the face kills most things. But in this case, not even the mooks could be killed by our magic. Oh, I don't like that silence. Oh my god, it's a dragon. And very old men with lightning bolts. With dragons. And I died again, and we respawn and keep shoulder tackling the dragon. Now it's our dragon, and it's no longer our dragon. I don't like the way this is going with 3 on 1. And the magic didn't work either. And I'm dead again, and I'm going to probably die at this point, aren't I? Knowing my luck. Good. Yeah, we seem to be doing okay. Until the other guy showed up, of course. Getting none to. Bah. I seem to be breaking my own rules here by not standing in the middle of them. By standing in the middle of them. <laughs> Shows how much I know. But it, in reality, this is actually a very good port of the game if this is, this is your sort of thing or you need a version for a com old 80s computer if you can't have the Sega Mega Drive version or a console port. Also, for some reason, you can jump in this game, although I don't know at any point you need to jump. I don't even know what the jump a thing is. I think you just need to t double tap A and occasionally do it. And we're down to our last life. Double magic probably ain't going to help much, but it will give us some extra magic from the little gnome guy. Yeah. And again. Nothing but nuclear bombs. Getting hit in the face. We're probably going to die to these guys unless the magic here kills them. Will it kill them? Yes, it will. Oh god, they got a dragon. And we're dead. Game over. Well, at least we've got to today's greatest score. But that should do it for Golden Axe. Join me back in a second while we put on Grizel. I'm just going to leave you with the kaleidoscopic colours until then. Okay, here we go. Part 2 of the game. Here we have Grizor, also known to the western world as Contra, and the game didn't load. Back in a sec. There we go. Now this is some awesome 8-bit music. See, even, I would say, better than the NES version. Yeah, I said it. But this is Grizor. Or, as you probably know it, Contra. Now we just need to rebind our controls here because it resets every time you change over tapes. And we're gonna start. Just like you remember it, don't you? Now, if you've never played this game before, or any version of this game, it's just run to the right and shoot everything in your way. As you can see, I got a spreader. Now, because this is on a cheap home computer, there are some limitations. And they're very prevalent in this game. For example, the spreader that you're seeing, only the middle bullet will kill you. In the any NES version and arcade version, that bridge is meant to explode. To my knowledge, the Konami code doesn't work in this game, although I haven't tried it out. And you can't move left. You can look left, but you can't move left. And this is where the colour problems of, of the spectrum come into play. Tell me if you can see those bullets against that weird tree background. Because I can only just see them as it is. Luckily we're getting out of the jungle, or 
whatever the heck those are meant to be. They look like little huts to me. And I'm busy getting my bum kicked because I thought it was a good idea to duck into bullets. But luckily you can drop down by holding down and jump. Which is a very good thing they kept over. And we've made it to the first boss. Who is really, really easy. He doesn't even fight. Just keep shooting the door until it blows up. Does we don't even get to see him walk in. But we do see this. It's in 3D. Which for mid 80s is pretty impressive. There's sadly there's no music except for the title screen. But I guess with the scrolling graphics I couldn't really fit it in. There's also the fact that in these 3D sections the bullet sounds are removed. Which is pretty sad. And hopefully I will probably die to this jump and I will. Basically all you gotta do is just walk through into the base. I've only got one life left, so I gotta be careful. Okay, final room. Here we go. Just shoot everything in sight with a spreader. Luckily in the 3D sections the spreader works as an actual, you know, spreader. And I died. Game over. Continue or restart? Yeah, I'll continue. Okay, here we go again. No spreader this time, sadly. Oh, wait, no, we actually kept our spreader. That's interesting. Okay, let's try not to die this time. If, even though, knowing my luck, I probably will. But we are coming close to our time limit here, so better hurry this up. Let's shoot the turret and shoot the barrels, which are slowly rolling towards us. Or die, that helps. No, that's a big problem in this game. The lack of an invincibility frame. The minute you respawn, boom, you can die. As you just saw in that section. But let's just keep killing everything in our way. So again, this is actually a very fun game, despite the limitations. So I would recommend that you go buy it, or play it, or emulate it, like I'm doing. And I'm on my final life. And I'm dead. Game over. You do have unlimited continues to my point, not to my point, to my knowledge, but I'm not going to. I'm going to end the episode here. And so, well, that was another Freaky Game Friday. I've been Grandmaster Scotty, and I'm going to leave you with the awesome Grisor theme. Until then, until then.